We explore Bali high and low to discover the best of the island. In this video, we'll show you our top 10 favorite places to go and the most beautiful things to see. Stick around to the end of the video to learn about our second most favorite island just a stone's throw away from Bali. Sure, after stepping off the plane, the first thing you want to do is have a cheeky cocktail and a refreshing dip in the warm water of Bali. One of our favourite things to do is hit up one of the multiple beach clubs on the island. We have been to Finns, we have lounged at Potato Head, and our favourite is by far Sunday's Beach Club in Ungasan, located on Malasti Beach. It's a little further away from most beach clubs, but what meets you is beautiful clear water, amazing staff, and an incredible vibe. It's Make sure to get there early, you can get a beanbag right on the beach. The entrance is 650k. This may seem expensive but this does include a 400k food and beverage credit. The entrance fee also includes a cable car down, beach towels, use of kayaks, snorkeling and paddle boards. The seating capacity depends on the tides. We recommend checking the Sunday's Beach Club tide charts on their website before planning your visit to avoid disappointment. We put that on your bucket list for Bali. Sunday's Beach Club in Uluwatu. Is it Uluwatu? <laughs> the south of Bali. South of Bali. <laughs> Feeling adventurous after your day of relaxation, we'd recommend hitting up one or some of Bali's many beautiful waterfalls. We visited just about every waterfall on the island and our top three were Sawat, Tukau Kapung and Git Git. You are sexy in bikini. Yes, you are. Sawat is one of the easiest to get to and one of the most picturesque of all the waterfalls in Bali. This waterfall is one of a kind, with its beautiful jungle walk and turtle shaped rocks leading to a natural pool paradise. You can swim or you can rent a little bamboo raft. Don't miss this hidden gem in Ubud. Waterfall. Our second favourite was Takad Kapung. Visiting this waterfall is like a combination between Avatar and Jurassic Park. A little harder to get to but well worth the trek. After traversing down a sharp flight of stairs you are led to an incredible cave river walk and what meets you at the end is a waterfall like no other. The waterfall tumbles through a cave opening and is lit only by small shafts of sunlight through the top. Keep in mind the water is freezing and we left Kagkapung shattered but can't wait to go back. Our third and final waterfall would be Git Git. Git Git would be higher in the ratings if it wasn't so far away from the central tourist areas of Bali. But it's easily one of the most impressive waterfalls that you'll find on the island. Oh my god, that is one of the most beautiful waterfalls I think I've seen. Isn't it you? Absolutely blown away when we saw this waterfall and the gate that welcomes you is an Instagrammer's dream with photo opportunities everywhere. The pathway is a bit tricky and I slipped a couple of times. There are souvenir shops along the walk if you want to grab yourself a bargain. I think we went at the wrong time of the year where there was a lot of rainfall which made the waterfall brown and quite aggressive. Make sure to take this into your consideration when planning your trip. As a bonus tip, you can venture along to a Ling, -a -ling in the same day. If you're feeling more adventurous, strap on your hiking boots and explore an active volcano. In 
In our four years of travel, hiking up Mount Batur was easily one of the best things we have done, and we really couldn't recommend it enough. We got up there the night before our sunrise tour and stayed at a hot spring resort on the lake at the base of the mountain. The hike generally starts at around 4am and takes around an hour or so before you reach the top. Once at the top, you are met with an incredible sunrise which will truly blow you away. Not only are the tour guides super friendly, they are very knowledgeable about Mount Batur, the surrounding areas and Bali in general, and they go out of their way to make this a once in a lifetime experience. be able to use an incense stick to make the volcano produce an immense amount of steam. Our guide even steamed a banana in one of the volcano vents. If you're lucky enough, you may even see some of the resident monkeys that live on the volcano. We stayed up on the top for a few hours and then headed back down. The views throughout are breathtaking. We ended the tour by visiting a Luat coffee and tea house, but this is optional. The price of the tour does vary on the guide and the itinerary, but it can be booked online or through your hotel. If you're into water parks, Waterbomb has you covered. It's a must visit. We unfortunately only visited once during our time in Bali, but it was the best water park we've been to in Asia by a mile. The staff make this place really special. They're very sweet, attentive, and make your time unforgettable. The water slides are immense. They have multiple levels depending on how brave you are. As a couple, one thing we loved about Waterbomb is that you could go on every ride with just two people. You could also film on nearly every slide, which is rare for a water park. If you're not into slides, they do have a pool bar where you can chill and also try out water volleyball, which we were terrible at. Since we were there, they have also opened a new section with exciting new slides and lots of chill out spots. The entrance price per adult is roughly 580,000. For a child, it's slightly cheaper. This is definitely one not to miss when in Bali. That was epic. That wasn't was it? so much fun. Such a good day. Really yeah. managed to make the most of it. The yeah. staff are amazing. They are so friendly. Food's really good. Yeah, the the food slides lovely. are good. The pool's good. Five stars. Five stars. One of the best things about traveling to Bali is the amazing local food they have, which comes with a wealth of culture. So why not learn to cook it yourself and really connect with what you're eating? We chose to go with Sabat Cooking Class in Ubud. They were amazing. You start off on a market tour learning about ingredients such as Indonesian garam masala. You then head to the cooking school to learn how to cook a wide variety of dishes, including chicken in banana leaf, satay, sambal tomat, and Bali fried chicken. The hardest one, twist and grinding combination. Perfect, thank you. Rotate, not only in the middle. Put on the light side, not the dark one. The light is inside, please. Tidy. Next, roll the leaf. The staff are attentive, very good at what they do, and unlike other schools, you actually get to cook everything yourself. You end with an insane feast, reaping the rewards of all of your hard work. You get a recipe book to take home, and they have vegan options as well. We thoroughly enjoyed our time here, and can't recommend it enough. <laughs> Good. <laughs>
At this point on the holiday, you're probably knackered and need some R&R. For this, we recommend seeking out one of Bali's amazing day clubs. Our favourite day club is Titi Batu in Ubud. It's more of a wellness club offering a modern gym, yoga classes, an incredible affinity pool, and they even have a skate park, table tennis, and a basketball court. This place is super picturesque and you feel very relaxed as soon as you walk in the door. We spent many a day having a skate and then sipping on a detox shake by the pool. We even hit out the gym and if you've been watching us for a while, you know this is completely out of character. There are multiple price points depending on if you want to include the gym or not, but you're guaranteed to have a blast. If you're after somewhere a little bit more lively, you can hit up the brand new Alassa Room, which is located in the Galaland. This place is absolutely insane. It has multiple levels of infinity pools, day beds for every budget, rice terrace swings, zip lines, its own rice terrace valley, the list goes on. We didn't eat here, but the restaurant and the food looks great. We went with a couple spring and the price was 325K. There are multiple swings and you can also pay extra to get your picture taken and get that famous Instagram swing dress shot. This is an Instagrammer's heaven. As a warning, this place can get very busy. We went there in the afternoon and we wish we'd got there a little earlier but despite this, we still managed to fit everything in and ended the night sipping on a few beers in the pool and jacuzzi. Make sure to add Alessa Room to your Bali bucket list. It's hard to ignore the sheer amount of culture in Bali and one way to see this in its purest form is at one of Bali's many temples. We spent a weekend for my birthday in Kandidasa and from there we went to visit Lempuyang Temple and Turtaganga. I'm sure you've seen Lempuyang before and the famous reflecting photos of the enormous Mount Ogung volcano in the background, but this place isn't just an Instagrammer's haven, it's actually a really beautiful temple with a lot to see. It's highly regarded in Bali as one of the island's oldest temples and is said to predate the majority of Hindu temples on the island of the gods. One of the main reasons for people coming here is the photo taking opportunity, but be warned you may be waiting for hours to have this taken. We went during Covid and it only took half an hour or so but it's rumoured to be taking some people three to four hours of queuing before getting that famous shot. After visiting Lempuyang, we then took a little trip to Turtaganga and although it's a palace rather than a temple, it's one not to be missed. Ganga is a former royal palace and boasts many beautiful statues and sculptures carved from stone and a huge pond where you can feed koi fish. This is another great photo opportunity. You can even rent a boat on one of the ponds. If you want to feed the fish, you can buy the food at the entrance. We would advise coming before 10am to beat the crowds and although it can get busy, it's a really relaxing place to be and we would highly recommend adding this to your Bali holiday list. Going diving. It's 
Scuba diving has always been high on our bucket list and Bali is the perfect place to do it. The most beautiful diving spots in Bali are located in and around Ahmed and Talamben. Ranging from coral reefs, shipwrecks and underwater temples, Bali has it all. We aren't qualified divers and this was our first time. We just did a paddy try dive. This was all organised by our hotel, which was called Emotion. We were super nervous to begin with, but the staff were professional and reassuring. Our next step is to get our paddy open water qualification, so watch this space. We paid extra for a package that included videography. This is all edited for us and the footage looks incredible. It's such an amazing memory to have and take home with you. The price for the tri dive was 1,450,000 rupiah each and that included two dives, equipment and lunch. If you have an interest in diving, we would highly recommend giving it a go in Ahmed and make sure to hit up a motion for the best experience. When arriving on the plane or sitting on the beach, you have 100% seen this statue and probably wondered what it is. We can confirm that is GWK Cultural Park and the statue is called Garuda Wisnu Kankana. Excuse the pronunciation. This stands at 121 meters and is a representation of the Hindu god Vishnu. The park is absolutely huge and definitely takes the best part of a day to visit everything and take in all the sights and experiences. We had a blast scootering around and looking at the enormous statues. We ended the evening with a traditional Balinese dance, storytelling and music. It was incredible to witness this and learn more about the Balinese culture and history. <laughs> you can even go up to the top of the statue and see the view. We unfortunately miss this as it shuts at 4pm. In the lobby you can also buy your own Oga Oga to take back a bit of barley with you. We promise to let you in on our second most favourite island, which is Nusa Penida. Just a stone's throw away from Bali, Nusa Penida gives you an idea of what Bali would be like before the influx of tourists. This island is packed with things to do, from snorkelling with manta rays, exploring untouched beaches and visiting one of the most beautiful and iconic views on the planet. We went to Nusa Penida for our anniversary. We stayed at a central hotel called NG Sweet Homes. They organised a floating breakfast for us and helped us figure out where we were going on a day-to-day -day basis. Definitely consider them for your base on Noosa. One of the first things we wanted to do was to catch a sunrise, so we headed to Diamond Beach, and let me tell you, this beach is a gem. Located on the east side of the island, this beach is a huge diamond-shaped cliff bang in the center of it, hence the name. 
Diamond Beach has a bit of a sketchy path down, but it's worth it and was one of the nicest beaches we have ever been to. We were lucky enough to have the beach to ourselves for a few hours due to us getting there just before 5am. Another must see on Nusa Penida is Angel's Billabong. These natural rock formations look insane and the natural pool in the middle is one not to miss. We can't stress enough how careful you need to be when exploring the rock formations here. Many tourists have seriously injured themselves. Let me tell you, the natural beauty at Angel's Billabong is on another level and it'll make for an amazing highlight of your Bali trip. While you are there, you can also visit Broken Beach, which is a hole in the cliff with a beach inside. You can sit on the side of the cliff for some epic photo opportunities. If you're lucky, you may even spot some dolphins. The last place on our new Spanida adventure would have to be the one and only Clinking Beach, better known as T-Rex Beach. Clinking is easily one of the most famous viewpoints in the world and until going to Bali we had no idea it was in Indonesia and it's way better in person than in photos. This place can obviously get extremely busy, so try and get there as early as possible for a clear view. If you're feeling brave enough, you can also trek down to the beach via the cliff face, but keep in mind it's not for the faint hearted and it's pretty difficult. Despite the amount of people there to take photographs and get selfies, T-Rex Beach is unmissable when visiting Bali, and we'd advise putting it high on your list of places to visit. There are rumours of a lift being installed down the cliff, so we'd suggest getting there sooner rather than later. You can let us know what you think about the lift plans in the comments. We hope you enjoyed our top 10 Bali bucket list. We had a blast putting this together and revisiting these places while making this video. We'd really appreciate you dropping a like and a comment It'd be even nicer if you stuck around and subscribed. Let us know what your favourite places are in Bali in the comments. All of the places we mentioned can be found in the description and we'll also include any links that we use to book the tours and activities and all the things that we've done in this video. We'll catch you in the next one. Bye! Bye.